I'm feeling alive again. Come on and declare that. I'm feeling alive again. Oh, I'm feeling alive again. I'm feeling alive again. All right, can we put our hands together? Out of the dust we rise, wonderfully made in Savior's eyes, created to shine the light to the broken of pieces of my life, shattered but not destroyed. The cross was the bridge that filled the void. Living in your grace, I'm overjoyed. Now I know, oh, come on, sing your love goes high, high, sweeping you away. I'm drawing closer, closer, every day, sinking deeper, deeper into your grace. My life will never, ever be the same. I come alive again. I take a breath, my eyes open. I feel close to my heart beating. Jesus has saved me. I'm feeling alive again. All right, if you're feeling alive in this place, why don't you lift up a shout of praise? Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm feeling alive again. I'm feeling alive Come on and clap. Running into your arms. Now death is lost and love has won. The power of the grave you've overcome. And now I know oh, oh, your love, love goes higher, higher. Sweeps me away. I'm drawing closer, closer. Every day, sinking in deeper, deeper. Into your grace, my life will never, ever be the same. I come alive again. I take a breath, my eyes open. I feel the pulse of my heart. Jesus has saved me. I'm feeling alive again. Come on and declare, I'm feeling alive. I'm feeling alive again. I'm feeling alive again. Higher, higher, squeeze me away. I'm drawing closer, closer. Every day, sinking in deeper. Deeper into your grace, my life will never, ever be the same. Your love goes higher, higher, sweeps me away. I'm drawing closer, closer. Every day, sinking in deeper, deeper into your grace, my life will never, ever be the same. I come alive again. I take a breath, my eyes open. I feel close in my heart. Jesus has saved me. I'm feeling alive. I come alive again. I take a breath, my eyes open. I feel close in my heart beating. Jesus has saved me. I'm feeling alive again. Come on, declare I'm feeling alive. I'm feeling alive. Alive again. Hallelujah. How many of you are ready to praise God? Hallelujah. And let's praise unto our God. Here we go. You are God, and we lift you up. We keep singing, we keep praising. We won't stop. Hey, giving all we got. Cause you're worthy of all glory Oh, there is no other You are forever Lord, over all There's nobody like you No one beside you Come on, let's lift them up to you To you Let endless praise resound Every night and Every night and day There was no delay Come on, 
and every single one of us that no matter what lies come against us, no matter what people say, no matter who people think we are, we know who we are yeah. in you, God. We know that you have called us. And we thank you, Father, that we are who you say we are. Who am I that the highest king would welcome? I was lost, but he brought me his love for, oh, his love for, who oh, the sun sets free, always oh, free. While I was asleep to see Jesus died for Come on, declare that Jesus died for me Who the sun sets free Always free and deep I'm a child of God Yes, I am In my fall I am 
chosen, not forsaken. I am who you said I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you said I am. I am who you said I am. Who the Son sets free, oh, is free. child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I child of God. Yes, I am. You know, each and every single one of you is chosen by God. Before the foundations of the world, he knew what you were. He knew what he called you to be. And he said, I will make them and they will be for me. What I say they are, they are. You are chosen. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Come on, declare that. I am chosen, not forsaken. Not Chosen, I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you said I am. I am who you said I am. I am who you said I am. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. My Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are the children of God. And I'm just so thankful on this morning that I can say that I am a child of God. I thank him for his love and how he cared for me even when I didn't think of him. Amen. That he left everybody else just to come get me and say, Brittany, I need you. He called you by name. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and put your worship. I dare you to think about just how good he is on this morning. I spoke a word you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life into me. You have been so, so good.
about you, but he didn't care what they were saying about me. He still came and loved on me. And he said, my child, I have need for you. And I want you. And I love you. Amen. Even when I was his enemy. When, when I, I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You've been so good. You have been so, hey. so good to me. When I felt no worries. I felt no worse. You paid it all for me. You've been so kind. You've been so, so kind. couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Yeah. And I don't know about you, now that I've got a taste of his love, I don't want to turn around, so I have to speak to myself. And say, show you won't mount up. Come on, let's speak that thing this morning. No shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming down to me. No wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. No shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming out to me. No why you won't tell them. Why you won't tell them. Coming out to me. No, 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 no. No shadow you won't light up. You won't. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming out to me. We plead the blood of Jesus. No wall you won't kick down. Why you won't tear it up. Coming out to me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Hey. No wall you won't kick down, why you won't tear up, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights in love. goodness of Jesus. Yay! My soul cries out. My soul cries out. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I've found, leaves the ninety-nine. I don't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love. Come on, let's lift it up. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love Think about his love. Oh, it chases me. Nothing you did drove him away. Amen. Leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love. 
me never ending reckless love of God oh it chases me down but it's still I'm found leaves the 99 I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it still you give yourself away oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God come on come on tell them no shadow you are come on this uh, come on mountain you are light up coming after, after me. me come on worship him no wall you all can down lie you all tear down coming come after me, me. yeah come on no shall you all light up mountain you all climb up coming after me yeah no wall you all king down lie you all tear down coming after me no shall you all light up Mountain, you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall, you won't kick down. Lie, you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found. Leave the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Yeah. Whoa, come on. Come on, you got to worship him this morning. Tell him how good he's been. Yeah, he's been good to you. He's been faithful to us. Come on, yeah, he's so good. He came and found you. That's what I want you to think about today. He came and found me. I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Come on, somebody. You got to know how good God's been, amen? Yeah, put your hands together. Clap like you believe it today. He's been good to me. He's been saved me. He found me. He redeemed me. Come on. You got to remember how good God's been. The Bible said we didn't know him, but he came and found us. We didn't love him, but he loved us, and that's why we love him today. I didn't deserve it, but he came and got me. Amen. I couldn't earn it. You can't earn it. I don't deserve it. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve but I'm taking it. I couldn't earn it. I'm taking it. I don't deserve it. I'm taking it. I couldn't earn it. I'm taking it. I don't deserve it. Come on, somebody. I couldn't earn it. Yeah, you got to tell them. I don't deserve it. But I'm taking it. Till you give yourself away. That's what he did. Never ending. Never ending. Never ending. Never ending. Come on. Loved you when you didn't love him. Come on. You got to think about that today. I want you to think about that for a minute. Say, he loved me when I didn't love him. You should have been lo- you should have been lost forever, but he came and found you. Yeah. <laughs> you should have been. You, you should have. Come on, somebody. He came and found you. You were lost. Remember that? You were lost. You were lost, but now you found. Praise the Lord. You were blind. Now you see. I don't know about you, but I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. You should have been dead, but you ain't dead. You should have been incarcerated. You ain't incarcerated. You better listen to me today. You should have been messed up, but you made it. Amen. Come on, somebody. Come on. You got to think about how good God's been. I told him in the morning, sir. I said, listen to me. I said, wait, 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 wait. You shouldn't even be here. I told my testified, I told, I, was telling, I told my parents, I said, you know, I was driving, like, I was back home, and I was driving, you know, and I rode by my high school, you know, and I was like, man, I said, I, nobody ever preached the gospel to me in that place. And I never heard the real gospel. We grew up in religion, but we never really heard the real gospel. 
I said, man, God, you, you, come, you came and found me. You know what I mean? I said, you all got a testimony like this. I said, you came in and found me. I wasn't, I didn't even know I was looking for you. You know what I'm saying? You didn't even know you were looking for him, but he came in and found you. He came in and sought you out. Bo, you better get what I said. Nobody else cared, but he came in and found you. You better look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he found you. You better look at your other neighbor and say, he came looking for you. Amen? He came looking for you for such a time as this, right now, today. And I'm going to tell you what. I might not know. I told him in the morning, I don't know all the words to these songs. I don't know the chords to play. I don't know the notes to sing. But I'll tell you right here now, I know when to give God praise. Amen? I don't understand all this. I don't know how all that works. But I know this. Thank you, Jesus, that I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. You came and got me. When everybody else quit on you, guess what? God came and picked you up. You better find a place to praise him in here this morning. Come on. Put your hands together and thank the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. You've been good to me. He's been so good. So good. So good. He deserves your praise. Father, we just thank you this morning for doing everything you've done. Blessing us, Lord. Keeping us, Lord. Watching over us. Thank you, Lord. You've been so good. We receive you. We magnify your mighty name because you're so good to us, Jesus. Bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Why don't you greet your neighbor? Go say hello to someone. We're glad you're here at Relevant. Amen. Hey, go shake somebody's hand you ain't never met before. Get out there. Good morning, Relevant Church. I'm Lo. I'm Mo. This is your weekly announcement show. Here's what's going on. Welcome. Good morning. We're so glad that you're here today. We are. Oh, Lo, we've got some VIPs in the house. Who? They're our first-time visitors. Our first-time visitors? Yes. I think they deserve a round of applause. They do. Come on, let's give it up for our first-time visitors. Thank you for being here with us today. We are so honored to have you here. Yes. And we have a little special task for you. Don't worry. I promise you it's as easy as one, two, three. First, I want you to find this Connect card Lauren is modeling. It says, Welcome Home on the front, Connect card on the back. Step two, take a couple of seconds to fill that out so that we can send you weekly updates. And last but not least, step number three, if you could take your Connect card back there where it says, Welcome Home after service, there you can receive a free gift, gift, gift. So make sure you do that. And Mo, we've got some special people besides our first time visitors, all of our online viewers. Yes. We want to take a second and welcome you. Hello from wherever you're watching. If it's on Facebook or YouTube or on our website, we're so glad that you're here this morning. And for everyone who's here in the building, we have our social media minute. I want to tell you three ways that you can connect with us at Relevant Church beyond Relevant Church. So that way we can just stay connected during the week. So first of all, if you want to check in on Facebook, go ahead and do that. Tag your friends who aren't here and tell them that they need to be here next week or on Wednesday. Um, while you have your Facebook app open, go to your search bar. Search for Relevant Church. We're the one with the orange R. Make sure that you go follow us there for updates, but not just that. You'll get encouragement and exclusive content we've designed just for you. And so last but not least, I want you to go to Instagram. Go to at Relevant underscore FL and follow us there too because you'll get some other exclusive content for Instagram. Absolutely. And. And. and We've got some fun stuff coming up. We do. <laughs> After service today, the young adults are having another gathering in the cafe. With free lunch. With free lunch. Yes, I know. It's so exciting. 
<laughs> so if you're between the ages of 18 and 30, please join us in the cafe for some free lunch and some very fun games. Yes. yes. So we're super excited about that. Come hang out with us. I also want to let you know um, that we have prayer groups here at Relevant Church, if you didn't already know that. And that's just for people to get together. We pray over our city. We pray over our nation. We pray over our church. Um, and we do that. There's a bunch of different times that we have prayer groups. They're not all in person. Some of them are over the phone. Um, so if you have a call to pray or you just want to pray for the church and the nation as a whole and that's a desire of your heart, then we've got a sign-up sheet on the foyer next to that sign-up sheet. You will find a list of all of the prayer groups that we have. So you'll want to find the one that fits best with your schedule and then you want to sign up for that. Let's get connected through prayer. Absolutely. Speaking of sign-up sheets, there is also another one in the lobby for baby dedications. Aww. We'll be having that on October 21st during the 1030 service. So if you'd like to sign up your child to be dedicated to the Lord, they can be of any age. Uh, go ahead and sign them up in the lobby today. Absolutely. And that'll be October 21st. We're super, the babies are so cute. Look at that little chunky baby on the picture. Yeah. So cute. So cute. And so make sure, you know, it's like not cool, like to be, I don't, never mind. I'm just going to stop talking. So anyway, <laughs> um, make sure you sign up your children for baby dedications. I also wanted to let you know, ladies, this is my last announcement on a Sunday for something new. The tour, it's coming this Friday. Okay, hold on. Something new, the tour, is coming this Friday night to Relevant Church for all the ladies. We're super excited on Friday at 7 p.m. And if you have not purchased your ticket, you've only got a couple days left to do that. So if you need to know, you go to relevantfl.org slash something new. Purchase your ticket, but it's not just one ticket that you're buying. You're buying a buy one, get one free. So you buy one and your friend gets to come, your family member gets to come. You can even split it. Um, as I've been saying, if you don't trust the Internet, you can go to the bookstore and purchase your tickets there and we will get them for you. Um, so make sure you just go visit. Say, I want to buy my something new ticket. I don't trust the internet. Um, and then we'll get you those tickets for that. And I have one more quick announcement for you guys. If you didn't already know, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. Let's just give it up for our pastors really quick. This is like the littlest celebration that we're doing for them the entire month. But each week we're going to have some different surprises for them, just thanking them for being the best pastors in the entire world. And so if you would like to celebrate your pastors, you can go to relevantfl.org slash pastors today. There's three things on there that you can kind of just connect with them. We're going to have a big celebration on the 28th, though, so be preparing for that. It's going to be a great time. We've got a lot of little surprises in there for them that they don't know about. And so and it's very hard to do that. We try very hard. So, um, um, anyway, I'm Lo. I'm Lo. These have been your weekly announcements. And as always, welcome, welcome home. home. Doesn't that picture look like the cover of a romance novel? Amen. Come on. No, be serious. Where did he get these pictures? Should have got like a pastoral like, you know, hey. You know. Doesn't that look like? I love it too, but doesn't it look like a romance novel? Let, it's supposed to. Yeah. I'm going to start praying right here now. I'll tell you right now. Amen. Thank you, though. I'm glad you're appreciating us. It's, it, honor is due. Amen. I'm going to get in trouble. It's okay. I don't really care. I'm going to get in trouble quick because I'm honorable. Today's my dad's birthday. You only get one dad. He hates every minute of this, but I don't care because I got my dad. I'm proud of my dad because your parents make you the man you are. Your parents do. Now, listen. Some of you say, well, my parents were, No. Your parents, you, you learn from the good. You learn, sometimes, you know what I'm saying? You learn from the good. You learn from the not so good. You do the best you can. Amen. I got my own three. I told them all. I said, I can't be responsible for any of you because I don't know what I'm doing. I do the best I can with what I know and whatever I don't. Jesus makes up the difference. Amen. So I just said, but it's his birthday today. So happy birthday, m m m my, da my daddy. Oh, amen. And yeah, and 10 4 was Karen's birthday. How you like that? It's the month of birthdays. Amen. Karen seen pastor appreciation. You know what she said first? She said this. She goes, you know, it's my birthday month. <laughs> Amen. But we got some really cool things going on. Amen. And I'm excited. Come on out. And let me ask you. I'm going to tell you something. There's something new tour. It was really good. Ladies, come on out and be a part of that. It is. It is really, really good to get involved. Fellowship together. Be together. Come and see. You know, and they're coming from all over. They go all over the country. I mean, they've been at, just so you guys know, like, they've been, like, I mean, like, ginormous ministries. I mean, they've, like, anybody that's out there that's huge, like, Christine, they were with Christine Kane, or I don't know if I'm getting this all right, but, like, they were at Central. Central's got, like, 20,000 members. I mean, like, these church, these girls, really, really, the ministry is anointed. It's awesome. 
don't miss this. They're coming through from Jacksonville to come see you. This is the time to get in here. Go get a ticket. Go be a part of it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Malachi chapter 3. How many excited about giving? Amen. I took a really good offering this morning um, because I was teaching you, and I'm going to do it all month long. Um, I want you to really understand biblical prosperity to why, the way God said. Um, one of the things I want you to know is this, is that um, I don't think you wouldn't be here if you didn't trust me. Um, so obviously you trust me with your spiritual life. So I want to give you some truth of the word of God. You know, I was saying something today, and I don't, I don't know, my, my sermon got all um, changed this morning. And uh, I, had, I, I went total autopilot. If you're texting to give, you're 386-968-1103. We changed that to what it is now because it's an easier process for you. And that's what we want to do is make it easy. So if you're texting to give and if you're online, that's the way to give. I believe giving is one of the most important things you can do because the work of the Lord is what you're giving to. Amen. Um, let's look at Malachi chapter 3, verse 7. I'm going to go slow. You know, it was funny. I want you to really get what I'm saying. And I know you do. We mean, Mr. Florey, we're talking about it was cute. But uh, I want you to understand it because I want to show you what the Bible says. You can't really argue with the word of God. You could choose not to agree with it, but you can't argue with it because it's true. If you decide for it to be true, that's your business. But it's true. Okay? So I'm just going to tell you the truth because here's my deal. I don't, need to be, I don't need to convince you anything. I'm just showing you what the Bible says. If you believe it, then it works for you. In the area of giving, it seems to be so muddy that people don't really get it and understand it. So let me just tell you what the Bible says, and then you make a decision whether you're going to do it or not. But we can't argue whether it's the word of God. It's not about money. It's about your heart. It's about God. It says, even from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my, my ordinances, and you have not kept them. He said, return unto me, and I'll return unto you. Look what he says, says the Lord of hosts. He said, where do we need to return? And God said, in the area what? He said, you're robbing me. Now, let me get this. I want to explain something here. Where are you robbing me? You robbed me in tithes, and you robbed me in offerings. So I'm just going to tell you something. Don't throw it out. Just grow with it. I got to teach you about tithing, and I got to teach you about giving offerings. Because tithing is really what we give back to God. He doesn't increase your tithe. He protects you with your tithe. Is that okay? This is the Bible. Your tithe protects you and keeps you kind of covered. It's a loan. You know what I mean? If Mike gave me 100 bucks, right? goes, here, here, pastor, here's 100 bucks. I go, thanks, Mike. I go running around with my 100 bucks, and then I go back and go, hey, Mike, here you go. Thanks for the 100 bucks. Did, did I increase? No, I just gave him back what I borrowed. Your tithe is what God lended to you. You understand? He gave it to you as an act of trust to see if you'll be obedient. You know what I'm saying? Now, listen, I, I've, been, I've been in this rodeo long enough. I got business guys outside of here. I got guys inside here. I got guys. Well, I'm, you know how much money I'm going to be tithing if I tithe? Well, who really cares? You better be careful what God's been giving you because if you don't take care of God, he might stop taking care of you in that area. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh, you know, business got me, oh, I'm making a million bucks. What do you care about 100 grand? That ain't bothering me. You understand what I'm saying? It's all equivalent to where you're at. But tithing, can't, tithing doesn't get increased. Your offerings get increased. Tithing's just your loan. You give it back to God. Offerings get increased. If you want to get more in your life, it comes through the offering. It doesn't come through your tithe. My tithe is just the documented proof that I trust God in the arena of money. But it's a loan. I give, give me a tenth. You see what I'm saying? So if you give your tithe back, guess what you do? You protect it. Look what he said. He said, you're robbing me in tithes and offerings. So if you're holding back the tithe, you're robbing God. Now, stop right here. Go slow. What do you mean you're robbing God? This is not a pressure thing, guys. We're just in it. I don't talk like this every week. You've been here. I'm trying to help you. Well, what, what happens if I don't time? Well, then you can't expect God to increase you. And you can't expect God in the areas of your finances. You, listen, a tither cannot expect to be blessed. God can't bless you. You're not following the law. I got one amen and a half a hallelujah. I'm just trying to help you now. You say, my money's funny. Your money's going to stay funny. You know, somebody gave me this funniest story. He said his son called him up, right? He goes, he goes, Dad, I got real financial problems. He goes, you've been tithing? He goes, no. He goes, well, that's a reward. <laughs> that's the reward of a non-tither, financial struggle. Yeah. It's the God's honest truth. You say, well, I don't believe it. How's it working out for you? <laughs> yeah. You say, and let me tell you right here now, you, you know what? You can get gain but not get gain godly way. 
and you're still going to have, you, the Bible says God, godly gain comes with no sorrow. Right. You could prosper in the earth, but they're miserable. Right. Looking over your shoulder, ain't never making enough, all jacked up, got no peace. The economy goes weird. They go wacky. That's, that's God. That ain't God. Right. God is, I give, do my part. God does his part. I sleep good at night. Right. You know what I'm saying? And God wants to give you more. More. And don't get greedy when you didn't have nothing. You were, you were free to give, and then you got some money, you get stingy. Don't get sticky fingers. Well, I'm going to hold it back. I had guys making money, you know, big money. Like, oh, that's 20-something 20 20 something grand. You were broke. What do you care about 20-something grand, bro? Don't you forget God. Okay, some of you are like, I'm worried about two bucks. Don't worry. That's where you start. You start with the two bucks, amen, and then you get there, amen, and it's, it's work. But look, you see what I'm saying? He said, don't rob me. Don't keep back from God. So well, I don't, I don't want to do it. Well, then don't get mad at God. Look what he says now. Now, this, this is the Bible. Now, he said, that's the Old Testament. You can find tithing in Hebrews chapter 7. Okay, keep going. Um, you're cursed with a curse. You robbed me in this nation. What's he saying, curse? Now, we know Galatians chapter 3 says, curse, Jesus redeemed us from the curse. Okay, but let me explain something. The curse is still in the earth. It's not in the church. So if you don't work the system of God, you work in the system of mammon. And mammon is the earth curse. You understand what I mean? So if I'm not in the kingdom concept with the king, doing it the king's way, I'm in the earth system. This system will chew you up, spit you out, give you ups, give you downs. Get out of it. Get in the kingdom and learn seed time and harvest. Is this helping you? So you understand what I'm saying? He said, you robbed me in this nation. Look what he said. Now, keep going. This is important. Verse 10. He said, bring your tithes in the storehouse. I told him in the morning, Who's, where are you bring your tithe? You bring your tithe in the church. That's where it belongs. Why? Because your pastor is the one that runs to you in a time of emergency. How do I know where I belong? Who's going to come get you to rescue you? That's how you know. Somebody say, I'm going to give it to the TV preacher. TV preacher ain't coming to your house. I like them. Some of those guys, I know those guys. They're great guys. But I'm telling you, you got to understand this. I bring my tithe. I bring my offering. I bring my seed. I don't, you bless other people. I bless other people. But you got to understand this stuff. God wants to prosper you. You got to follow the laws. I asked the Lord, I'm like, God, I want these guys to prosper. He said, you got to teach them my laws. If I don't teach you my laws, you can't prosper. He said, there'll be me in my house. Prove me now. If I'll not open up a window of heaven. Keep going. Look what it says here. And prove. I give you so much, you won't even be able to receive it. Blessings coming. Now, look at the next verse. you got to see this, right? And I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. He shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. You want to know why stuff keeps getting ripped off? You ain't giving. You know what I'm saying? Like, where's my increase? Where's my harvest? Why I got to go for this? Why I go for that? You got to be a tither. You got safety in tithing, amen? There's safety in giving the Lord. Cast your fruit before it's time. Look at that. Keep going. In the field, said the Lord of hosts. What's that mean? Divine prosperity. I ain't doing, now listen to this, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to go, right? You understand this? This is scriptural. This ain't me trying, oh, you're trying to work the offer? Nah. I never come in here a day in my life with a motive about money. Because you ain't the source of nothing. You understand what I'm saying? Never, not a day in life. You never, never, not one time. Not one time. It's about you. Hmm. You're telling, I told him the week before, in the conference, I said, if you can get a seed in the ground, you can guarantee a harvest. What you can't get with your intellect, your concept, where you grew up, what you know, what you don't understand, where you cannot get, a seed can get me there. Amen. It'll get you there. Amen. Every time. You put in a seed, it'll get you there. Anything in life, you put in seed form, I can get you anywhere in life because of a seed. Not just money, your life. I told James, it was James, he was going to go sit with the president of the company. Right? What I do? I gave you four, what I give you? Four questions to ask him. Ask him. I printed them out. I gave it to him and I gave it to Addison. I said, you ask these four questions, he'll notice you faster than anybody else in this company. There were four questions. I wrote them down. I said, just ask him however you can ask him. But I said, if you're going to sit with the president of this company, I said, you ask these four questions. You tell him these four things you will do as an employee. He'll never forget you. Favor will hit your life. Because there's a posture for every position. You just got to know where to stay. Addison got it too, right? Yeah, that's how you do it. You position yourself right. Anything in life. Your life's a seed. Everything you do, you saw. I ain't listening to these goobers at work. That's exactly what you're going to get, the goober reward. <laughs> you got to do it right. You don't like it. I'd rather you quit than go someplace you're miserable. I'm telling you. Go get a better job first and then leave because your attitude determines a lot of where you're at. Yeah. 
It's the God's honest truth. You go to work with miserable people, make you want to leave. Don't, and let me tell you, don't you leave your blessing because miserable people are at the employment place. That's why they're there, to try to get you out. That's the Holy Ghost. Did you get that? Come on. Where's, where's the bucket brigade? Where are you guys at? Come on. They're going to serve us. But did you get that? So I got to tithe. So I say, well, I don't believe in tithing. Well, then you better not believe in making money, too. <laughs> I'm telling you right here now. So I'm making it. You can't keep it. What's the, difference of, what's the difference of being in God and not being? I know a lot of people got a lot of money that don't give to God. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but not even that. They're happy probably, too. Some of them, I could care less. But you want to know what the key is? You can prosper, but if you don't prosper in the kingdom, you don't get no reward. You don't get no reward. You don't get nothing. You don't get nothing for that. Kingdom principles, kingdom principles mean you gain. Because here's the thing. Your life isn't about what you do here. It's what you're setting up for over there. So you build the kingdom in the earth. <laughs> you're going to go see these people. I have billions of dollars in the earth. You're going to go there and they're, they might not even be in heaven. You're going to be in there. Some little, some little sweet little old lady going to be there living in a mansion. And this dude's going to be living in a shack. And say, how come what happened in the earth and what happened here? I laid up my treasures in heaven. I laid up my treasure in heaven. I want my giving account to look bigger than my bank account. I want, well, you just living for, I want my bank account to be here. You just living for here. I ain't saying, I'm staying here. No, Brother Norval went home to be with the Lord. Right? 92 years. Glory be to God. 92 years in the earth. Doing the mission of God. Praise be the Lord. You want to know what? I said, man, you get to heaven, you see that mansion, glory to God. If you can live 92, 95, my grandpapa made 95, right? Glory to God. 90, you always spend eternity with Jesus in a shack. If you don't get it right, no, 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 no. I'm going to get it right in the earth. And when I get to heaven, say, I'm going to put my crown on the ground and say, glory to God, and I'm out of there. Glory to God. Heaven's my home. I'm just passing through this place. Eternity is not an option. It's a definite glory to God. You better play up some stuff and lay up some stuff for God. Amen? You know what you're doing. Come on, guys. That's why you're here. That's why God brought you here. Amen? So you embrace it and you start working it and you'll get it to work and it'll work every time, all the time. Amen? Hold your seat in your hand. Say this out loud. Say, Lord, I'm believing and claiming. You tell them what you're believing for right now. Tell them right now, say, I'm believing for the money, I'm believing for the finance, I'm believing for the business. I don't know what you need. Sit there together and talk it over. Say, this is what we're believing. And right now, by faith, I want you to do this. You better tell the devil right now. Say, devil, I break your power in Jesus' name. Get off my stuff. Take your hands off my stuff right now in Jesus' name. And angels, you're ministering spirits for me. I'm an heir of salvation. Go get my stuff. Bring it to me now. Right now. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Ushers are serving you. Well, this morning, I tried to go right, and God went left, and I'd rather go with God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I want, I want to get you in this thing. I'm going to give you some time. I'm really, really... Uh, Asking myself, because what's Connect the Dots about? Kind of almost still continuing in the series that we started about prayer. Is that all right? Kind of like, kind of goes together. Connecting the dots, bringing things together. Thoughts are going to get where we get to, but right now we've got to talk about understanding what happens in the time. I didn't understand it when I first preached it, but now I know. I started out saying this. From after faith has been released, because faith's got to be released for anything to happen. There's a, there's a process. I, I basically this morning, I declared what I wanted to explain, and then God explained it to us. Yeah. I was like, this is what I'm trying to do, and then I, it was like, he just went on a, a total different way, which is better go with him. Okay, so here's what I'm saying. My, 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 my heart, my heart, you know, the Bible says that, right? A man devises a way in his heart, but God directs his path. Puts his steps out there. So I put something in my heart, but he put my steps together. And that, that's process number one. You better stay in the things of God. Because if God changes and shifts, you got to have something in you to pull on. If I don't have it in me to pull on, I can't take you there. That's why I stay, stay full of God's word. Is that okay? Stay full of God's word. 
You got, you, got, you, got to, you got to force yourself to do this stuff, guys. You know what I mean? Stay in discipline. Okay? So what I was saying was, we were talking about prayer, remember? Got all those prayer points. Pray, believe, release, do all this stuff. I'm like, oh, okay, we're, we're cool. But now how, how do I get from where I prayed and released to see this stuff manifest? And I thought, like, the thinker, the thinking was so important. And thinking is so important. But then the Lord started to lay it out, and I kind of got it. Because change and the decisions to change are going to be based upon you. Change isn't going to happen until faith kicks in. Is that all right? And until, until faith kicks in, change ain't happening. So I started going this way and then kind of went all a bunch of different ways. We're just going to go with it and what we could say together in this thing. And we'll see it. Because one of the things I want you to understand is this, is that if we don't understand some things that are taking place, we're not really going to be able to produce this thing the way we mean to. And that's really important. Go Turn with me to James chapter 1 and verse 1 because I think what started happening. So as I'm in this position of changing, I have to understand the process. Process isn't always easy. So we talked about faith and we talked about praying and we talked about believe we receive when we pray. Now I get in this thing from released faith and released prayer to what do I do while it's happening in the earth? Now most people that are not in faith are in trouble. Okay, because if you're not in faith, you can't get God to do anything. Now, people get kind of ornery with that and go, well, God can do what he wants to do. God can't do anything outside of faith for your life. Did you get that? Yeah. I'm going to go, really, I want you to get this. So you got to have faith. Now, God, God, what do you mean God can't do? A God can't do. God can't do. He's got no right in the earth unless you give him faith. But if you give him faith, you give him access. Is that Okay. Now, here's the thing. We sometimes don't understand the process, and we get uncomfortable in the process, and we forfeit what God does because we don't really understand the process. So today, I've figured out this. I'm going to give you the process that faith released, prayers released, life moving forward. The minute faith gets released, the minute prayers get lifted up, the minute, the minute you want change, See, the minute you want change, everything goes into a cycle of process. Whenever you want something to happen, once faith goes, the process begins. It happens all the time, every time. I, I, I ask myself the question, why, why do we even want change? Well, change is connected usually to desire, but we've got to make sure our desires connect right. Is that okay? So I want to I wanna take some stuff out of the equation. I'm not going to keep you all day, but I want you to get you, Is this cool? So my faith got released. I want change. My prayers got released. I'm expecting change. I'm believing for a better marriage. I'm believing for, I don't know, whatever you believe for. Finances, health. Something's got to change. So now what do I do? And I want you to see this because I think if you don't see it, you get almost frustrated in the process. And if you don't understand the process, you forfeit the price. The price tag isn't that big. If you understand the process, if you don't understand the process, it's going to look too costly to try to do it, and you won't try. So I need you to really focus on saying, you know what, let me see it the way you're telling me, and let me just absorb some of these things, all right? Because I think this is the key. If I don't understand what I'm going through, when I'm going through it, I'll abandon. And I don't want you to abandon. I want you to stay to the end. James chapter 1. Here we go. Ready? James, the servant of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting my brethren, count it all joy, underline it, circle it, when you fall into diverse temptation. Now, stay there for a minute. Just go back to verse 2. Count it all joy. Now, let me explain something to you. When you fall into temptations or tests, I don't know about you, but that seems to be a hard moment in time to get excited. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the middle of a trial. How in the world do you want me to be joyful? This is like crazy out of your mind, I got to be joyful in the problem? I don't want to be joyful in the problem. What do you mean in the problem? He said, count it all joy when you fall into various temptations, tests, trials, stuff going on. Now I'm in this testing of my faith. Now, the, uh, uh, First Peter says this, don't think this fiery trial is some strange thing. It's common. It's not like no big deal. Everybody goes through it. It's a big deal to you and me when we're in it. But come on, right? It's a test. 
Remember, I told you during faith, this is a test. This is a test of the emergency broadcasting system. This is only a test. You don't remember that? Remember that? I was like, this is a test. This is a test of your faith. This is, don't get alarmed. This is only a test. Some of these kids don't even know what I'm talking about. We used to watch TV back in the day on a television. <laughs> they don't even watch it on TV no more. That's on a pad, a phone. I don't know. It's on everything. Remember back in the day? Y'all remember you watching your show? And that fuzzy, crazy thing would show up? Remember that? This is a test. Y'all got the past, the, the president sent y'all a tweet, right? Y'all got the, the same thing. Yeah. Y'all got the, t- I didn't get it. I was like left out. I was like, I don't even know what everybody's talking about. What are you people talking about? Everybody got something. I didn't get it. Did you get it? I didn't get it. Darn it, man. Why didn't you send me one? I don't like being left out of nothing. You? Everybody got ice cream the other day. I was like, they didn't ask me to go. I would have went. Come on, right? Brethren, count it all joy, right? But this is a test. Well, you're going to go through tests and trials. The God don't bring them. This is what you got to learn. Now, the church, you see, the church lives in a defeated state because it doesn't teach you the place of dominion. If you learn the place of dominion, I don't want to, see, you go, I, I could preach, and sometimes I do it, but you got you to you gotta not lean too heavy that way. Uh, as the church always getting out or the church g- trying to get something. Now, you, you got to live in a place of dominion and victory. You don't live in a place of always trying to get out. You know what I mean? You got to live in a place of power. Tell the devil where he's got to go, amen? Tell that joker, hit the road. You ain't got no place, amen? You got to rebuke him and stand your ground, okay? So let's just get in this. You know what understand what I mean? You can't preach out of a place of experience all the time. You got to preach out of a place of, of dominion. Meaning like this, get you all excited in your emotions. That just leaves you defeated. Can't just preach to your emotions, what I'm telling you. Like, you're going to get out. You're already out. You're on top. You ain't in no mountain fighting something. You're in the mountain one. I don't got to get to keep it. I'm just keeping what I got. See what I get? It's, all right, there. Count on all joy. Everybody circle joy. Where's your joy at? I'm going to tell you now, if your joy is slipping, you probably ain't in the place your faith needs to be. If you're, man, I'm not excited. I don't get excited. You better start learning how to get excited. The Bible says, count it all joy when you fall into various temptations. Look at this. Keep going now. Here we go. Watch this. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. Here's what you got to get. Patience. Now listen. Faith. Write this down. Faith. All my note takers. Faith becomes perfected in patience. Faith becomes perfected in and patience. Problem is, everybody hates patience. Let me explain to you what I mean. <laughs> Absolutely right. <laughs> Knowing this, that faith works patience. Now, I don't know about you, but patience sometimes is a pain. But faith becomes perfected in patience. Now, we have to get an understanding of what does patience mean. We're going to read a little more, and then you're going to see. Because if I don't know what patience is... Patience can become a problem, but patience is not just a waiting. Patience, patience is not a waiting. Patience is a completion. Does that make sense? Patience is like, ah, uh, a lot of times I think when we think patience, we think, okay, when's, come on, got it, let's go, let's go, let's go. No, patience is a posture. Patience is a, a position inwardly, not allowing the external situations to move you. Does that make sense? Patience is a position inwardly, not allowing external situations to move you. I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to be, I'm settled on the inside, even though everything's chaotic on the outside. Is that okay? So watch, you see this? So watch verse 4. We're going to keep reading. But let patience have its perfect work. See that? So patience has got a job. Everybody say, patience has a job. Well, what's patience's job? To what? Perfect faith. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect in time for wanting nothing. You see that? Just write it down. Go slow. I'm going to go real slow. because I, I See, I play with your I didn't realize this as much. I really meddle with your mind. It's weighty in here. See this thing? You can go to church, and you walk in the door, walk out the door, and not really get weight. 
you could just come in and get experience and not wait. But when you drop weight, you understand what weight? Spiritual weight. I got to let it almost settle on you. See, that's why you got to pay. See, it's hard. You got to remember. You got to pay attention. You really got to pay attention in here. I know it's different. It ain't like normal church. And that ain't bad. Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you, you just, you know what I'm saying. Oh, you can go to another thing. I'll be here another hour. But like, patience, no, because I'm telling you what it is. You, I, you, I want to go to church. You're crazy. You just go to church. I got to go to, I don't even like, I got to get to a spiritual place where I can go to another level. That's what a church should be. Not that I went to church. A bunch of pablum pulpiteers. Tell me what makes me happy. I ain't, I'm, a, I'm, the, I'm the best coach you ever had. I didn't come here to make you happy. Not a day in your life. I come here to get you somewhere. No, I'm being serious. I love you enough to tell you the truth, but it, just go with me. You know what I mean? Is that all right? So you see what I'm saying? So let pay, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not trying to brag. I'm just trying to tell you, you got to, this is why you got to lock in. You should come in here geeked up. Like, you know what I mean? Like uh, 45 minutes, bring it, bro. Say it. Let's go. Say something. And then go home and veg out all day. Don't come here. And don't come here. And if you really, don't come in and read your Bible. Do us nonsense. Read your Bible at home. Come in here and like play on Twitter or whatever that is. Nah. Come in here and download. Get it. I'm telling you, I'm being honest. It's a good atmosphere for you to go to another level. You got it? Okay, so let patience have its perfect work. What's patience's perfect work? To perfect my faith. That you may be entire wanting nothing. That makes you complete as an individual, non-rattleable. I don't rattle. It makes me strong. Patience is a process, but patience is a work and production. I'm going to explain it to you a little bit later, but get this, because here's what you got to get. The minute something starts to shift, patience has to become perfected in that moment, otherwise you have not finished the process. I don't understand why. I don't need to understand why. Just show me how to play the game so I can win. Okay? You see it? So let, but let patience have her perfect work that you may be what? Perfect, entire, wanting nothing. Hey, see what the Amplified says. I have no idea. I, I've never read this a day in my life. I probably read it and forgot it. Let's just see what it says, and then we're going to go see. But this is what I'm going to see as they pull it up. That's a little, that's a little curveball. But are you getting it? Are you kind of pulling that in? Okay? Be assured that the testing of your faith through experiences, right, or experience produces endurance leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. That's great. That's great. Ain't that great? Read it again. Be assured that the testing, ever say testing of my faith. See, t- faith that cannot be tested cannot be trusted. You step out and go, faith, belief. Man, if that thing don't get tested, how can you trust it? Isn't it cool? You want to... Let's just roll with it. Be assured the testing. Yeah, I like that. Let, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Where you at, Amp? Yeah, go, yeah, be assured. Let me see that. Let me see three. That's cool. Yeah, you did good. Be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces what? Endurance leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. So basically, every, this is what I knew in my spirit, every single promise is designed by God to produce spiritual maturity. That I knew because here's the thing, because God's a setup artist. He's masterful. See, here's the thing. True growth means change, and the only way you're going to change is based on desire. Otherwise, you don't want to be like God. So God has put promises in front of you like bait. That you say, I'm so tired of not being in the promise, I want it so bad, I go for it. And the minute you go for the promise, you got to change to get it. Because now I'm hanging on to a promise, and the promise is now creating maturity in my spirit so that I walk through the process that he does not demand to be accepted in relationship, but he demands for next level anointing. He loves you just the way you are. But if you go after a promise, you are going to change in character and you are going to change in the maturity of a believer. Because to get that promise, see, to get, see, this was that you want something, 
you got to forgive. Oh, I don't, I don't know how. See, you don't want it bad enough if you ain't willing to forgive. But the day you decide to forgive is the day you want it bad enough. Now I'm maturing. The promises of God make me mature. That's why carnal Christians ain't believing God for nothing. They got nothing. You want to know why? You want to know why I can look at you? You look different. You say, I don't look different. You look different to me. Every one of you going after something, you're growing yourself. And everybody going after nothing, staying the same. I've seen 80-year-old paupers and 18-year-old millionaires. I've seen 18-year-old morons and $80 millionaires. Come on, you know what I'm saying? What am I saying? It ain't because your age or this or that. It's because you're going after something. You understand what I mean? Are you in that thing? Yeah. Going after it. You want to promise you're going to change. Because you can't. You can't. Can't stay the same. So did you get that? Produce an inner peace. Want to go verse 4? Let's see what verse 4 says. And let endurance have its perfect result and do through work. So that what? You may be perfect, completely developed in your faith. That sounds familiar. Now watch this. Go back to the King James. I want to read this. And then we can look at this over here. Look, keep going. Well, you can, you, yeah, let's, let's read it in King James, and if I want it the other way, we can't. Because verse 5 is going to make sense. If any of you lack what? <laughs> Wisdom is the principal thing. The only place the devil can defeat me is where I'm ignorant of God's word. The only place the devil can defeat me is where I'm ignorant of God's word. If I've got God's word on it, you can't take it from me. You got to stay in this word, man. Now look, here's the deal. You want to know why? You want to know why? Look at me. Can I? help you can i give you a million dollar nugget read your bible and do your stuff but you pay me to get you there people ain't gonna like that what i just said but i don't care less you pay me you know why you go to work to pay me to get you there you understand what i'm saying why are you coming here and give and I, you, you ain't giving it to me you know what i mean i got the people that set all that up but this thing you read your Bible and do your stuff and say, I'm going to go to this dude as a specialist. I'm going to go in there on Sunday. You ain't got to go fight for this stuff. I'll fight and get it and put it to you on a platter. It's like I just gave you an $80 steak. Eat it. Well, I didn't prepare it. Eat it anyway. I go to Miss Lita's house. She stayed there cooking all day long. When I go there, I eat everything. Why do you eat everything? Because it's good. I don't know how many 90 hours of work it took to make it. I just enjoy it. Hello? Come in here and eat. Dave, we out there at work, man. You slinging this stuff, making sure everything goes. You got to make sure that super sod's on time, bro. Right? Just come in here and eat what I put in front of you. You see what I'm saying? You ain't got time to go digging all this up. That's what I do. I dig it up and bring it to you on the platter. You just take it. See, you fight with me whether I'm going to take it or not. Are you crazy? Boy, that's going over big. Now you come in here fighting. To, well, I don't know what he's telling me. It's the truth. It's the Bible. Do what I tell you to do. I ain't even going to study like you study, Pastor Chris. That's right. That's why you got me. Man, I told him in the morning, I said, when we build the building, I'm not going to build the building. Are you crazy? I don't know nothing about building no building. I'm like, I got specialists sitting in here that know how to build building. I'm going to go see them and give them money, and they build the building. Are you understanding how this thing works? I ain't going to fix no boat. I ain't even going to clean the boat. I ain't going to do jack besides go fishing on the boat. Hello? I don't even, I mean, I don't want to say nothing bad. I got one once. But I'll just be nice. I just want to go fishing on his boat. Why? You ain't got to do nothing. Just show up and go. It's idiot proof. Sort of all around. Hey, great. Just tell me what to do. Y'all experts in the spirit in here. Listen to what I'm telling you. Lay it up. If you lack wisdom, ask. You got to get it from a source. You think I got everything figured out? I don't know what I'm doing. My God in heaven, I listen to this money summit. I don't know jack about money. You listen to these guys. I listen to two are the smartest men walking on the face. Three of the smartest men walking on the face of the earth about money. Rattled me to the core. Life-changing. I didn't understand the process of a seed. To the degree I do now. What do you got to do? Force yourself to get it. You see it? Everybody's got to learn. When you stop learning, you're done. Does that make sense? That's a mini little thing. Say, lack wisdom, ask. What do you ask for? God gives to everybody liberally, upbraided not, it shall be given him. Keep going. You getting this? Don't fight me. Just take what I'm telling you. Say, all right, I'm going to do it, Pastor. I see what you said. My faith is being perfected. I got it. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers like a wave of the sea. He's tossed to and fro. This guy's up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. You call them roller coaster Christians. You know what I mean? Whoa! Yay! No! Whoa! Praise the Lord! Whoa! No! 
Glory to God, no God. Yay, God, bad God. Whoa, he's the best, he's the worst. Whoa, I'm going to live, live, I'm going to die, die. Come on, man, you got to get off this thing. God's the same. He don't change. He changes not. Don't be up today. The only thing that's telling you whether God's good up and down like that is your circumstances. Stop telling your circumstances to tell you what's going on and start telling your circumstances what's going on. Yeah. Say, nah, I serve a good God. Hallelujah. Yeah. He's good all the time. And if it looks bad, the devil's behind it. Go get him. Amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Right? He that waves like a Look at verse 7. woo let that man not think he shall receive anything of the Lord. So I can't be vacillated. I can't be all messed up. Go. Verse 8. Check this out. A double-minded man is unstable in everything. Everything. He can't stay stable. Unstable. You ever been around people that are just unstable? They're unstable. Why? They can't find faith. Find faith. Want to go to the next verse? I don't even know if I want that one, but go ahead. Yeah, I don't want that one. Give me 12. Yeah, because let the brother be exalted. Then talks about the guy who's rich, be poor. Blessed is the man that what? Endures temptation. Now we're going to look at this in the Amplified, so get ready. Because this is probably good. I don't even know what it says, but I believe him. <laughs> Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he's tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which is promised to them that love him. Let's read 13, and then we'll go back and read an amp. Okay? Let no man. You better get that. When I say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither he tempteth any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Now, that ain't sex and all that. It's just, you know what I'm saying? Like, people see lust, they go, ooh, it's perverted. No. It's you want something. You want something. Or you desire something outside of what God has you to desire. Is that okay? That's why you got to remember this. Everything you desire should be connected to a promise. Otherwise, you got no place going there. You all don't play like that. Y'all act like you saved. You know, when I say lust, you all thinking lust. <laughs> Come on, right, Miss? You know what? Yeah, lust before you give me a thumbs up. It's true. I say lust, you all like, oh, I knew they were looking at me. <laughs> I seen them doing worship. They were winking at me. Come on. You know what I mean? Come on, you want something that you really shouldn't go after because the Word of God has not given you access to it. Does that make sense? If you find it in the Word, you could. Here's what I like to say to everybody, all right? Find the Word so you could find access. God wouldn't lead you to a Word unless He wanted you to have it. Here's a good way to tell what God's in. Whatever you get desirous about, God's in. Because what I'm not desirous about, I don't care nothing about. Does that make sense? So if you start getting excited, man, I'm starting to get this healing thing. It's kicking in. Why am I wanting to know about this? Run with it. Saying you start, I'm listening. You start getting that financial thing, like, man, I should be prospering more than I am. Go with that. That's God showing you. Get in my book and find my desires. You think you had a natural desire any day of your life? Come on, man. Everybody had it. You know what I'm saying? It comes from hearing, or or, or being led. Why are you desires, brother? You ever get something like, man, I just feel like I gotta. You ever feel like upgrading something? Maybe you got a car and it's getting a little beater or something like that. It's like, man, I need to get a new ride, new ride. What are that desire for him? Not just because of what's going on, it's a season. You ever notice how desires come in seasons and leave in seasons? Why is that? God's trying to work on something with you. You see it? You might be like, oh, I'm excited about that business. I'm excited about starting. And then it wanes, and then it comes back, and then it wanes, and then it comes back. Ride that stuff. That's God trying to reveal desires to you. Is that Okay. Amen? Okay. But let him, amen, when he's tempted, when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Look at verse 15. Then we'll go to Amplified. I don't know, maybe. That thing gets stuck. I know it does. You going to verse 15 or are you just playing with me? But let me, <laughs> when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. You see it? So everybody go, lust, sin, die. Make sure you be careful what you're looking at, what you want. It's dangerous. Amen? Can we go back to verse 12? Let's look at verse 12 and amplify. Oh, praise be to God. I think it was verse 12, wasn't it? Yes. Let that man not think when he's tempted, temptation came of God. Because God, because 1 Corinthians 10 says what? God, with every temptation, has produced an escape. Why would God be tempting you and giving you escape? That make him weird. So why would God give you, why would God give you temptation in a way to get out of temptation? That's like crazy. He's giving you temptation and he's giving you, no. He didn't bring the temptation. He just brought the escape from the temptation. 
Well, why would God, God be crazy? He, gave me, he tempted me, and I give me the way out. No, he don't. He teaches you. Remember, I told teacher don't talk during the test, man. That's why you pay attention in church. You ever have that quiet season and you're in that testing time? You're like, man, heaven ain't taking nothing. The teacher don't talk during the test. Now you just got to try to remember what Pastor Chris said. What he say about this? Should have been paying attention. He was yelling. Yelling about something, not me. But yelling at me. Joker was yelling at me three weeks ago. I know he was talking about me. And by the way, I'm talking about no one in this room. If you feel like that, I, I, don't, I don't get things like that. People get mad at me like, are you talking to me? <laughs> now I am. Yeah, probably was you. <laughs> I didn't know who I was saying that for, but obviously I found out. It was you. <laughs> now they try to find you later. Were you talking to me about that? I know I've seen you look at me. No, I wasn't. I was talking. I didn't know who it was, but now I know it was you. <laughs> you just told on yourself, bro. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. You got me mad. Ah, oh, that's the one I was talking to. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's see what it says in the end. Blessed. Oh, I like that. Spiritually prosperous. I am. A, I, I might walk around and start, hi, how are you? Who are you? I'm the spiritually prosperous man. How are you? It's got a nice ring to it, right? Spiritually prosperous. Prospering all the things of the spirit. Favored by God. I like that. Come on, man. You read this? Is the man who is what? Steadfast under trial and is what? preserves when tempted. Woohoo! You're like a jar on the shelf for like 90 years. We preserved you. <laughs> you ever see some of them jars? You know, that have been in like the cabinet for like 900 months, and you like look at it and go, wow, man, is that stuff still good? And you turn around and go, wow, you can still eat this? <laughs> you ever, none of you ever been shocked by that? Yep. Have you ever been shocked by that? Yep. Remember you used to go in grandma, like grandma's basement or something like that? Some of you know what I'm talking about, right? She's got a can of something other than him down there. You're like, can you even eat this? Forever, right? It's preserved. <laughs> Some of you are like a pickle. <laughs> we just soaked you for long enough. You preserved. I'm preserved by now. <laughs> Some of you just preserved. We could smack you around. Nothing. I'm preserved. <laughs> Faith don't move. Nothing moves me. I just stay the same, right? Preserves when tempted. That's good, ain't it? Go to verse 13. Keep reading. And then we got to go to a couple of... Let no man say when I'm tempted, I am what? Being tempted by God. For temptation does not, what? Originate from God, but from our own flaws. Right? Could be the devil, could be something, could be an idea, could be something. Right? God don't do it. For God cannot be tempted. What? What is evil? By what? what? He can't be tempted by what is evil, and he himself tempts no one. Ain't that good? God's not testing me. God gives you instruction, so when the test shows up, you can pass. Write that down. God gives me instruction. The tests of life show up, and then God helps me, inter intercedes for me so I can pass. Ain't that good? Go to verse 14. Ain't that good? Doesn't that make you feel good? God's for me. If God be for me, who in the world could be against me? But each one is tempted when he is dragged away, enticed, and baited to commit sin. By his what? Worldly desire, lust, or passion. You, you know what? You, you, you want what you want, but I hope you got what you got when you get it. But I want that. Well, you better pray to God. God wants you to have that. Otherwise, you're going to get something you don't want. Woo okay, keep going. That's true, though. Man, have you learned the pain of, look at it. Pain, no, used to be painful. Till you figure out, yes, is way more painful than no. I went looking for yeses. They are the most dangerous thing in the world. You can see, you'll seek until you get yes. Can I do this? You pray to the Lord, can I have that? Can I do this? God like, no. But maybe, can I have that? He said, no, but you say yes. You got your yes. How's that work out? It's produ yes has produced more pain in my life than anything I've ever felt. Because I got what I wanted. Because you ask enough, God will just say, go do what you want to go do. You're going to do it anyway. And then you try to pray to get out of it for eternity. One time he told me, he said, I'm delivering you from your desire. <laughs> you didn't hear what I just said, and not because I said it fast. He said, I am delivering you from your desire. Here's that test. There it is. 
Whose phone doing that? What is that? Oh, pray to God that ain't nobody kid. Is that a kid? I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus, man. You know, those people like that. I got no mercy for that kind of stuff. People take a kid or something like that. I pray God come with vengeance and make sure everybody's safe. No, it was, that, it was everybody's. It was an Amber thing. Pray for that kid in Jesus' name. But that's how that thing used to sound, remember? Got our attention. Then, ooh, I don't know, illicit desire. This is getting funky around here. Come on, somebody ask and see the birth to sin. And when sin has run its course, it gives birth to death. All right, let's leave that scripture and go to 1 Peter chapter 5, amen? Hey, some of you don't be getting wild with your thought life now. Come on. Amen? Go to 1 Peter chapter 5, and, and we're going to look at this. Are you okay? You doing good? We're going to take communion today. Is that good? Great. Ain't that good? do not you like taking communion? Look at this. 1 Peter 5 and 5. Now, th- this was going to help you. I don't know. Somebody's beeper's going off. Shut the thing off. Likewise, whatever that is. I don't know. Is that the president trying to get us? I don't know. Somebody's trying to get us. Somebody shut the beeper off. Likewise, you younger, submit yourself to the other. Let me tell you something. Write this down. You all right? Write this down. Everybody pay attention. You back? Listen, now this is going to be great. Relationship is simple until confrontation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Relationship, this is going to hurt. That's why <laughs> I'm bracing you before I let it out. Relationship, relationship is basically easy until confrontation is exposed. Relationship is easy until confrontation is exposed. Submission does not begin until agreement ends. Did you get that? Submission does not even start until agreement ends. Let me tell you where relationships get challenged the most. Relationship gets challenged the most and is only really become relationship until agreement has been gone from it. (laughs) Because otherwise it's just acquaintance. Relationship is going to cost me my own opinion certain seasons. And posture is going to be the key to determine where I need to position myself. Friendships, right? You know what I'm saying? You give and take. You ever had this kind of relationship with somebody? When you tell them what they don't want to hear, they don't want to be friends no more. That is not a relationship. That's an acquaintance. Get rid of them. It's okay, but don't put your heart Thing, you're gonna get hurt. Okay? Posture, right? Posture means this. I position myself in a relationship to know where I sit. The biggest mistake people will make is not knowing posture in a relationship. There's certain relationships I posture myself in a different position than others. Does that kind of does that does that certain things I know I'm the teacher, certain places I know I'm the taught. Don't talk. Let me tell you, biggest mistake you can make. Biggest mistake you can make, I'm gonna, this is a million-dollar key. When you're in the position sometimes when you, don't, when you need to be taught, don't talk. Just sit there and be quiet. Because what happens is if you don't pull in that environment, the environment will shut down. Most people start talking and ruin it. You got to learn that stuff. There are certain atmospheres. I went to lunch. I didn't say nothing. I sat at a table. With great men of God. I only spoke when I was spoken to. I interjected nothing for three hours. It wasn't my place to talk. It was my place to learn and to be taught. There's nothing I could say in that. I am not going to teach them nothing. You got to understand posture. Could I probably won't speak in that arena because it's not my arena to talk in. You see that? That's order. You see how this room just went? See how that happened? That's God's order. That's what God wishes we would teach you. Because when you learn those principles, you'll get everything. Because one and one, being a hearer in that environment got me decades of knowledge that I couldn't get if I would have been talking. A great story. There was a preacher, and he went to go have a, he had dinner with Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders was, a, you know, KFC? Colonel Sanders was a great Christian. I don't know if you know that. He was in Kentucky. Great man of God. Gave away like millions of dollars, great man of God. And he, this guy had dinner with Colonel Sanders. And the guy just kept talking and 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 Colonel Sanders got up and said, well, I'll be, I'll be going to bed now. And he got to the foot of the stairs and he looked back and the guy was taken aback like, why is this guy going to bed? He goes, I'll come back when you're ready to listen. 
and walked upstairs. And he goes, I don't know what I missed in that conversation, but it's gone forever. Certain environments, don't talk. You don't need to talk. Just receive. That's spiritual wisdom. I'm not saying that in a relationship. You know what I'm saying. I'm not trying, I, don't know, I don't know why I say this stuff sometimes. I have no idea why I say what I say. But somebody in here is pulling and wants answers. Because I got no reason to say that. But I understood what it said. Submit. Certain things you spend. Now listen, I'm not talking about pat, you go to dinner with somebody, you're going to sit there. You know, certain dinners. Uh, I, did that, I did that one time. I sat there for two and a half, hour, three hours, almost spit salad out of my mouth and just sat there and just <laughs> thought it was great. <laughs> What'd you say? Nothing. Pastor, you said nothing. I said nothing. I just ate. Almost spit it out of my mouth because what I was hearing was really good. Why would you do that? Because I understand posture. You'll learn a lot more putting yourself in the right posture. And here's a big one. Younger, submit to the elder. Man, if these kids would ever figure this out, I don't care what it is. See, that's a spiritual environment. If we're in a work environment, I'm going to listen to you too. You got to learn from the elder. Oh, this, this generation, entitlement, all this nonsense. These kids think they know everything. You might know a lot, but don't say nothing. Learn from somebody else. This is America's li- losing this stuff. Because parents don't parent no more. Screens parent everybody. A screen parents these kids now. Here, go play on that thing. Get out of here. I'm ready to throw the things against the wall. I'm saying it all the time. I'm about ready to get rid of all of them. The, 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 the screen's going to parent your kid. No, screen ain't going to parent your kid. You got to parent them. Put them in a room with a screen. That ain't no good. I'm meddling, but I'm leaving. Submit yourself, right? So remember this. Say, well, pastor, you know, uh, I kind of think, well, you're in trouble already. We ain't got relationships to you submit in certain things. Well, I don't agree with what you said about the word of God. I can care less. It's the word of God. You understand what I'm saying? We talk submission. Let me tell you, submission Look, I got people right now, I ain't going to do nothing. I ain't going to do nothing big without calling them. That makes me safe. You want to know what, though? I'm scared to call. Because whatever they tell me, I know I got to do. If you don't have that in your life, you rogue, bro. You got to find. I'm nervous. Like, if I call and say this, what they say after this, I got to do. I heard a great story. A guy, a preacher guy, he called these one guy, and the guy said, no, do this. And he called another guy, he said the same thing the other guy said. You got you to gotta obey. See, if you don't obey, you ain't really submitted. Everybody says they want it, but then when you get it, you got to change. And then it's painful, and then we don't want it no more. Are you guys, is this okay? You want to go home? Are we all right? You see what I'm saying? No, I'm not being here, but you get this? We'll pray. I don't agree with you. Great. Now we're going to submit it or not. This is working out. See, every relationship you got, it's re- look at your kids. Uh, it's our house, and this is the room we made, and blah, 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 blah. But I don't agree with it. Now, here we go. We're going to challenge in relationship right now. And if you sit there and go, hey, bump you and your rules, we got rebellion in the house now. And guess who caused it? You did. Well, why did you do that? Because I chose to have a difference of opinion. From the opinion I'm what? Under. Okay. What am I saying? You know exactly what I'm saying. I got, we got house rules. Okay? And you go, well, I don't agree with the house rules. Let me tell you something right here now. You parents, your kid don't agree with no house rules? Tell them, great. It was great having you in the house. (laughs) Praise the Lord. It's been great having you. Let me know when you're leaving. Because we got house rules and we ain't changing them for you. Because last time I checked, you ain't got no money. So straight up right about now, tell me when you're moving out because I can maybe rent that room. I'm like, whatever they say. I had three, she's cooking like there was no tomorrow. I didn't even know what laundry was. I was spoiled and praise be to God loved every minute of it. I said, laundry, I had to learn what laundry was when I went to Bible school. I was like, what, how do you do this? I put it all together and used like cheer and just said, pray God, it works out. <laughs> I got tired of that. Man, it, man, put the hot coal, hot coal. I said, throw it all in something, make it work. I had pink t-shirts the one month. I really did. I had pink t-shirts. They're like, they, had, they bled through. They look, had a little pink hue to them. I'm like, I'll just buy new ones, praise God. Like, I ain't getting in all this. <laughs> I, yeah. I said, whatever you say, that's what I'll do. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. I'm a man. 
<laughs> hey, man, how's that job working out in that house and that rent in that car? I'll be a boy the rest of my life. Praise be to God. Leave me in the house till I'm ready to go. You understand what I'm saying? I got to listen to somebody. If you don't listen to somebody, you rogue and you're dangerous. You're the only voice you got in your head, and that's the dangerous place. I don't listen to nobody. Okay. He won't subject to keep going. We got to go. Oh, my God. Clothes with humility. We got to go. You guys are keeping me in here all day. First, we're just proud and give grace to someone. Somebody's like, I thought you were, I, we were keeping you. Were you keeping me? No, you're keeping me. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Go. Cast all your care upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Bam. Be sober and be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he made. Resist steadfast in the faith, knowing. Same afflictions are accomplished in your brothers that are in the world. Resist steadfast in the what? Hold your faith. Everybody's going through the same kind of stuff, just a different way they're going through it. Everybody's going through the same stuff, just a different way they're going through it. Somebody went, somebody, and here's the cool part. This is so good, I got to say this. Somebody's already gone through what you're going through. That's why community and connectivity is so important. I watched the guy one time just get the right legal advice and got him out of three years of anguish. Because he didn't know what he was going to do. He's getting ready to lose all his property. He's like, I don't, I don't, this is insane what's happening. Went to a meeting, found the pastor. The pastor said, you're not, I know exactly what you're going through. I went through it. Gave him his lawyer and got the thing done in three weeks when it took him three years of anguish. It's connectivity. Your answer is awaiting you and someone else. That's why you got to pay attention to the environment you're in. It's important. If you're in an environment where nobody knows, if you're the smartest person in the room, get out. Get a new room. You know what I'm saying? If you walk in here, oh, my God, I'm more brilliant than everybody in here. Have your little ego moment and go, oh, my God, I've got a PhD in brilliance. And then go to a bigger room and go, I am the stupidest person in this room. Praise God. Good idea. And I don't mean that in a weird way, but I'm the, la I'm the least in knowledge in the room. Whatever you want to say, do it in your way, right? And go, i got to up my game. See it? Change your environment because the answer you're waiting for is in someone else. Okay, leave that up here. Okay, we're going. We're going to take communion today. Did I tell you that? Who was just, I did. Staying for, what? No one is to accomplish in your brethren that are in the world. Ten, watch this. But the God of all grace, so everybody say grace will get me through. The God of all grace who has called us into eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you what? <laughs> Suffered. Yay. 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 I sound like Elmo. Yay. Is that Elmo? Yay. Yay. Suffer. Yay. Everybody say yay. One, two, three. Yay. Let's get a crescendo of yay. One, two, three. Yay. We're going to suffer. The suffer is in the patience, but the patience is not suffering. Is that okay? What do you mean suffer? I got to hang in there. I got to hold on when I don't feel like holding on. Suffer a while, make you what? Perfect, complete, and what? Strengthened, established, and settled. You see it? What's that mean? Completion. I'm going to be strong. Because watch this. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Look at it. You're going to love it. They got it from the morning. Hebrews 6. You know what it is? It's like Hebrews 6 and 10 or something like that. Hebrews 6 and 12. Is where we start. That you be not slothful, but followers of those who faith and patience inherited the promise. Everybody say faith, faith. patience, faith. inherits the promise. So promise is found in patience, perfect work. Faith has to be perfected by patience. What is patience all about? I'm complete, entire, wanting nothing. I'm, steadled, I'm settled, steadfast, and strengthened no matter what goes on. This is basically what patience is. I'm not going to change my internal position based upon external circumstances. What's patience? It's I'm not going to change my inward position of peace based upon external circumstances. It's not going to move me. Call me up and tell me whatever you want to tell me. I don't care. I ain't moving. Why? Because here's the thing. If I can keep my external, internal peace, okay, in faith, and st I'm not moving, then the external cannot move me. That's patience, perfect work. Faith doesn't rattle. Remember he said it's waver like the sea? And watch this. Keep going. 
Look at this here. That you not be suffered through faith and patience of heritage of For when God made promise by Abraham, Abraham was greater. We were less than. We went up and made covenant. Swear by himself. Look, he says. Keep going. Surely I will bless thee. And multiplying, I will multiply thee. Covenant brings multiplication. When you covenant, when you go into covenant, brings multiplication. Brings growth. Brings, brings next level. You can play. Brings next level. Look at 16. You get 16. You got the day sealed. For every man swear by the greater and oath for confirmation and all strife. Hey, where'd you go? Go to 15? Did you skip one? And so after he had patiently endured. Beautiful. That's what I was looking for. So after he what? Okay. Okay, I get it. How do I obtain the promises? After I patiently endure. So don't think this time of where, where is it? Patience is a good thing. Well, you know what? I don't have to see it to believe it. I believe I received when I prayed. Now you're working patience. Patience ain't waiting in traffic and not cussing. That ain't patience. Patience ain't waiting in traffic without cussing. You understand what I just said? Patience is I'm putting pressure on that promise. I'm putting pressure on that promise. My faith ain't coming off that promise. I, I believed I received when I prayed. Look, they, hey, they said you can't. Get, I believed I received when I prayed. They said the doctor said you can't. I believed I received when I prayed. That thing said, I believe the cities, I believed I received the state, the government. I, I believed that I received when I prayed. And because I believe, I received when I prayed, I got patience putting pressure on promises. So I'm not coming off what I believed I received. Patience, time don't mean nothing to me. Time don't mean nothing to me. You got to get to that place. If you, how would you know you're being patient if you weren't judging it by time? Remove time and you won't even know you're working patience. I just live in the now. I don't know whatever I just said was good though. Yeah, I think God should start paying me rent. He just uses me and then puts me back on the shelf till next week. I don't know. Somebody one time said, say that again. I said, I don't even know what I said. I don't have a clue what I said. You understand? That's how you do it. Don't let patience be a problem. Use patience as a pressure. And let time just fade away. Don't let, don't let time dictate to you what you can do. Dictate to time what can be done. You know what I mean? Override it. That's why you got That's what you do. Sat down, we got it. Take some of it, go home, listen to it, you get it, okay? We're going to take communion. They're going to come and bring communion. Amen? i tell you what, I like taking communion. I'm, I'm going to give you a minute here. We can set these guys. Come on. Oh, you want to take this? You can. Is that what you guys were planning on doing? Oh, you going to bring it up? All right, go for it. Here, I'll take, you want to take, I'll just take this. That's right, I don't get any. Oh, they're going to bring it up so we can go. The ushers are going to come. Come on, ushers. Ready? You're going to get ready and show you how to do this. We're going to get the elements all ready to go. Here's what we're going to do today. As we take communion, they're going to bring communion on down. Amen. And when they bring communion on down, we're going to go this way. We're going to go right. We're going to go left. We're going to zig and we're going to zag. But I want you to get ready today because in this place of taking communion today, I want you to know it's a holy moment. We take communion because we do it in an act of reverence to God. They're going to come. You guys are going to just follow their lead. And as you follow their lead today, I want you to, to get this in your spirit. That communion is a covenant connection. Is that Okay. That's why Jesus said it's so powerful. As soon as you guys are done, you can come on down. So uh, get this and understand it. This is about covenant. This is about enforcing a covenant. Okay? So I want you to do this. I want you to just kind of follow the usher's lead. They're going to show you how. Go from the back. We're going to go to the front. And as you go together, we're going to do this together. And I'm going to get up there and we're going to knock it out. Amen? All right. So follow the usher's lead and come on down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So I want you to do this. As you get the elements, just get them, hold them in your hand, and don't do nothing with them. They're going to start from the back and move to the front. And as they move you on up here, just get ready to go. I'm going to grab my stuff, and then we're going to get ready to go knock it out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'm going to explain to you what God's talking about. Just follow them and follow the flow. Hallelujah. And don't do anything till you get back to your seat, please. Hallelujah. I want to read something to you out of the book of First Corinthians, amen. And as you get this stuff, just go back to your seat. And if you, you want to sit when you get there, you can. First Corinthians chapter 11, Jesus explains it best. One of the things that he says is this. He says that when you partake of this, and I want you to just be listening to me as you're walking. This way we could kind of do it together. He talks about it. 
And he explains. He says, when you take communion, then it's important. For in eating, everyone taketh them upon themselves. Every time, basically what it means is this. Every time you take communion, you've got to examine your heart. The Bible says that you could bring damnation upon yourself. So as soon as you're seated, just kind of connect with me. What does that mean? That means this, that you could basically take communion wrong in one respect. That you don't examine your heart. You say, Pastor, do I have to, is there, is there rules to this? One rule. Make sure your heart is clean. And what does that mean? That means when you get back to your seat, I want you to do this. I want you to reflect upon your heart that if you got to get right with the Lord, you get right with the Lord. I don't know what that means. Maybe there's something in your heart you feel like maybe something you got to get right, make it right. The Bible says you could bring upon yourself damnation. What does that mean, bringing upon yourself damnation? That means this, that you could take this cup unworthily. And what does that mean? That just means there's something you need to get right with God before you take communion. That's it. I don't know what it is. Don't get nervous. Don't freak out. Just ask the Lord if there's something there. You might have to forgive somebody. You might have to, you might have to repent about something. You might have to get something right with the Lord. Maybe God gave you instruction and you didn't follow it. I don't know. I'm not God, but you got to ask yourself. So as soon as you get back to your seat, examine your heart. Maybe close your eyes and just ask God, God, is there something you're trying to tell me? Is there something I need to adjust? Is there something I need to do? And if you do, you do it. And if not, don't worry about it because Jesus made it clear. He said that while you do this, you do it in remembrance of him. So he wants you to be clear in conscience and clear in mind and clear in heart. Boy, I'll tell you what, God is so good. Man, he loves you. So as you get back to your seat, just sit there. Thank you, guys. Praise the Lord. Jesus said this. Every, in verse 11, 29 of 1 Corinthians, he said, Wherefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of Jesus. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat that bread and drink that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. This, listen to verse 30. For this cause, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For we do not judge ourselves, we shall what? We should not. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened to the Lord. That we should be not condemned with the world. When you come together and eat, take one for another. Here's what I want you to do. Examine your heart. The Bible said it. Just fix it. Close your eyes right now. If you got to examine yourself, you got to repent, you got to ask God for forgiveness, do whatever you got to do, but do it now. Thank you, Lord. Jesus did this. He sat at the disciples and he sat with them at the Last Supper. They were eating and they were drinking and they were doing life. And all of a sudden, he said these words. He said, for he had received. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and take it and ate it. And said, this is my body, which is broken for you. This you do in remembrance of me. Here's what I want you to know today. As we get ready to take communion, obviously, this is not Jesus' body, nor is it his blood. But this is a symbol of what he's done for us in covenant rights and responsibility. He gave his life so we can have life. He gave up his ability to have to have rights in the earth and so we could have privilege and have him as our father everything he did he did for us everything we do we do in covenant agreement with him so today maybe you're at home or maybe you're here as you get ready to partake i want you to remember this one thing he gave his life so you can have life don't ever forget it and every time we do this we do this in remembrance of what he's done for us you can partake After the same manner, Jesus he took the cup. Sup, saying, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you do, drink it and remember to me. I call it liquid love. 
His precious blood shed for me, shed for you, for the remission of our sins. I didn't, I didn't.